Hello and welcome to Benny and Moose Save America, where every week we strike back at toxic fandom and the failure of the American education system through the power of barroom trivia. Now, I know I'm not Benny, but I am Mark the Moose Haas, and I will be hosting today. Why? Because our very own Benny will be playing in this match. So, because of such a momentous occasion, we're going to bring in a special co-host. He's usually our bartender, but we're giving him a bit of a promotion without the pay, introducing the one, the only, Cousin Ryan. Hi, everybody. Hey, buddy. How's it going? What's going on, man? I'm excited for today. It's going to be a great one. Getting all festive with my Christmas sweater, you know? I mean, Christmas is year-round. So even though this will probably air in March, uh, it's still Christmas time in our hearts. So we figured that we would celebrate by having some National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation movie trivia today. I'm excited. And we have some great, great competitors today. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in the first one, our good friend, uh, someone who actually gave us a chance to go on his show a lot over the last few months. We talk nerdy all the time. The one and only Jordan, the movie hero, Anderson. What's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Jordan, well, uh, so glad to get you on the show finally. Yeah. <laughs> well, Moose, I just want to say that that uh, thanks for bringing me on trivia. This is just a real nice surprise right here. And if I win, I'll get you something just real nice. Real nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, Jordan, we ask every guest that we come on, especially when they're when they're very like movie themed uh, uh, shows. Like, what about National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation keeps you coming back to it? Why do you love this movie? Well, for me, like it's just it's a movie that I grew up with, and uh, it's a movie that that just Reminds me of a lot of Christmases I've had before. I mean, maybe not quite as disastrous as, as the Griswolds, but I mean, we certainly had years where we've gone a lot with the lights and the decorations. We've had, we've had years where the, where the family together isn't meshing quite so well. And, and it's just funny. Like, like for me, like pound for pound, like it's got to be the funniest Christmas movie for me. So, so yeah. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more on every one of your reasons why you love this movie, dude. Yep. <laughs> This is my number one Christmas movie, so I'm excited we get to Same. have you in this today. I feel like this is yours as well. Yep, I grew up with this, so I watched it like multiple times a year, even outside of Christmas. I watch it, so <laughs> amazing. Uh -huh. We're gonna drop you out for a second. We're gonna bring in Benny. And next, folks, we're introducing our next competitor. Uh, you know him, you love him, maybe you hate him, probably not, because he's the most lovable guy in the world, our very own Benny Hamlin. Merry Christmas, Benny. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for having me on, Moose. I love the show. I watch it every week. <laughs> well, we appreciate your patronage. We really, really do. Uh, I think you're our only subscriber, so thank you for that. Anytime, Moose. i got uh, 17 accounts. Uh, they're all following. <laughs> yes, we're up 16 more, Ryan. Up 16 yeah. more. Uh, Benny... We know you love this movie. Tell us your opinions on this movie and why you love it. Well, I never cared much for school growing up. And then so seeing like Chainsaw and Dave and how they adjusted to the summer school environment, you know, it just it made school seem like something tolerable. And then Mark Harmon, he just gave like this really electric performance and him and Christy Alley, they had great chemistry so it was just a it was just a good summertime romp, you know. Okay, I I worry about you in this match, Benny, given that description of this movie. But uh, let's move forward and get this match <laughs> going. We're gonna bring in our good friend Jordan and Benny. And listen, gentlemen, today we are gonna have the hap hap happiest episode since Bing Crosby tap danced with Danny fucking K. Okay. <laughs> You guys ready to roll? Let's ready. do it. Okay. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation Trivia begins right now.
Question number one. At the beginning of the movie, Audrey asks Clark if they are driving out to the middle of nowhere so he can get a what? Why would you drive out to the middle of nowhere, Ryan? Uh, I don't think I can literally say on this recording, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll touch base about that later. I'll get it out of you today. I live, I live somewhere uh, where the deserts are around, so, you know. Five, four, three, two, one, and Mr. Movie Hero himself. Uh, I believe it's a tie with a Santa Claus on it. <laughs> yeah, we'll give that to you, Benny. One of those stupid ties with the Santa Claus on it. <laughs> also the correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. One to one. Uh, question number two. What does the sticker say on the front of the truck that is tailgating the Griswold family at the beginning of the movie? Sticker. Mm. And we figured we'd go a little deep cut here on these gents yeah. to pick things off. That is a deep cut. Uh, <laughs> I've watched summer school over 500 times in my life, Moose. Bring it, buddy. No. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Someone got into that eggnog a little early, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's a little early in the evening for Benny. But, I mean, he's a couple hours difference in that's Ryan. So, I guess the nog hits people differently. Uh, Benny, we'll start with you, buddy. What does that sticker say? Dog on duty. That is correct for a point. <laughs> and, Jordan, what did you put? Yeah, I didn't have it. I just have a we break for no one. <laughs> Excellent space oh. balls reference. Yep. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Close. Bringing out the Mel Brooks early in the match. I love yep. it. <laughs> My second favorite director. So. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Question number three. What is the name of Cousin Eddie's family dog? Was that a cat behind I, you there, Ryan? She Artemis heard dog and took the hell off. So <laughs> fair enough. She heard this dog coming. Uh, I mean, I think these guys have it. There's no point in counting them down. That's Jordan, what's your what's your answer, sir? What's his pride and joy? Snot. <laughs> snot is correct. <laughs> Benny, it's not one snot. It's multiple snots. Yeah. <laughs> Plural is correct. <laughs> Uh, question number four, gentlemen. Why doesn't Eddie want Rocky to give Art a kiss when Eddie and his family first arrive? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this this answer might be my favorite answer in <laughs> any any of the episodes that we've asked uh, asked questions so far. And so <laughs> it's a longer answer, so we'll get done in a minute. To write it mm -hmm. That's a uh, that's a heck of a Christmas sweater there, right? You really got that. Oh. Got to keep the dinosaurs going. Yep. Oh, baby Yoda. Nice. Oh, nice. Baby Yoda. Yeah, it's all I want for Christmas. <laughs> yep. All right. Nice. Benny, let's start with you, buddy. He has a lip fungus thing they haven't identified yet. Okay. Yep. And yep. Jordan. Yeah, the lip fungus they ain't identified yet. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> Good job. Uh -huh. Might be one of the reasons I haven't gotten kissed on New Year's Eve in the last three years, but you know, we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a big old smooch when I see you, Moose. It's fine. All right, we're well, moving on to question number five What type of coffee mug does Clark use while at work? Funny thing was, is I, because I watched this movie so many times as a kid, I was obsessed with this mug. <laughs> so then I actually had my parents buy me one one year for Christmas. Because this was like the top of my list. I believe I had that same uh, mug, but like the, the outside is like rubber. It would get like all moldy in between the mug and the frame. <laughs> uh, oh. Jordan. This one could be a little uh, tricky because he has multiple mugs throughout the movie, but I put Tasmanian Devil. That's the one we're looking for, you, sir. Uh -huh. Benny. I'm sure the correct spelling of Tasmanian Devil. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, mine was a little off. <laughs> Once again, we here at Benny and Moose Save America do not discriminate against misspelled <laughs> words. <laughs> that is correct for a point. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm still looking forward to the Benny versus JT spelling beat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> number six. How many twinkling imported Italian lights does Clark say he put up on his house while he was decorating? Holy crap, Ryan. I really thought this question was going to stump them, and both of them are. <laughs> I, I Before I, I was even done answering. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> we'll catch you down, Benny, in five, four, three, two, and one. And, Benny, we're going to start with you. 250 strands, 100 bulbs each strand for 25,000 imported Italian twinkle lights. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> wow, nailed it. And Jordan, how about you? 25,000 Italian imported twinkle lights. Go. Nice. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> well done, gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Moving on to question seven. In an exchange between Clark and his father, how does Clark Sr. say he got through their holiday messes? Uh. This line here uh, about sums up my late 20s. <laughs> <laughs> my liver hurts just thinking about that, but yes. <laughs> it's not mess one, Moose. I think you're thinking of the wrong move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, too. Uh, Jordan, your answer, sure. You got through it with a little help from Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Betty? Jack, oh, not the American flag, Jack Daniels. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. Got a lot of help from Jack Daniels. Yep. <laughs> How much money does Grandma Norris offer Rusty to rub a real painful burr on her foot? This is one of my favorite lines to quote all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we went very quote heavy in this match, gentlemen, because I figured you guys could probably together recite this movie. Oh, yeah. We'll go five, four, three, two. Benny, go. <laughs> 25 American cents. That's right. A quarter. And Jordan. <laughs> a whole quarter. And go with your sister, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is correct. Oh, gee, Grandma. Thanks. <laughs> All right. And the last question of this round. <laughs> What prayer does Aunt Bethany give before the family starts eating dinner? I love that you lost it uh, <laughs> while asking this question. I think you went to the answer first before. <laughs> it just immediately popped in my, back in my head. I'm like, yep. <laughs> it's so good. Got to say grace. All right. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and one. We're going to start with Benny. The Pledge of Allegiance. That is correct for one point. Jordan? Grace, she passed away 30 years ago. The Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is correct. Close, close game going into round number two. <laughs> We've got a perfect round with nine points. Jordan is trailing with eight points. This game is going to go anywhere. These guys know this movie. I think we just slipped up Jordan on that one question, yeah. <laughs> but I think round number two is going to determine how deep these guys know this movie. Here are the rules for round number two. Okay, going into round number two. Benny, you have the lead, nine to eight. Would you like to spin our drunken wheel, or would you like to defer to Jordan? I'm going to keep the pressure on. I'm going to go first. Okay. Wow. So we're going to bring in the drunken wheel of destiny. Benny, you Top should know up. how this works. Let's get the old girl going here. And please tell me when to stop. Stop. Oh. You got sparky quotes. 
Very nice. Very nice. Sparky quotes. <laughs> Okay, Ryan, you want to take Sparky quotes? Yes. That would be Clark quotes. I, I, it took me a second, I figured. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sparky quotes, or as we could like to call it, Clark quotes. And we're going to go ahead with number one. Oh, the silent majesty of a winter's morn, the clean, cool chill of the holiday air. Finish, Finish the that quote. quote. And an asshole emptying a chemical toilet into my sewer. I think we give it to him for two I'll, points. I'll give you for two points. Yeah. <laughs> an asshole in his bathrobe emptying a chemical uh, toilet into my sewer. Yeah. Question you got the hardest two. part of that quote. So yeah. yeah we'll give it to you. Question number two, finish the Clark quote. Please forgive me for my cousin-in-law, whose heart is blank. Multiple choice. All right, finish the Clark quote. Please forgive my cousin-in-law, whose heart is either A, where his brain should be, B, bigger than his brain, C, the only thing he thinks with, or D, Three times too large. I'm going to go with heart is where his brain should be. That is That's incorrect. incorrect. So, Jordan, this comes to you for a one point steal. Um, I'm going to go with, with B. That's correct. That is correct. <laughs> Whose heart is bigger than his brain. Brain, yeah. Struggling. I appreciate that, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta take a deep breath for this one for question number three, because it's a long one. Oh, yes, you got this question. <laughs> yes. Prior to saying the following, how does Clark say he wants Frank Shirley brought to him? And I want to look at him straight in the eye. And I want to tell him what a cheap, lying, no good, rotten, poor, flushing, low life, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood sucking, dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat ass, <laughs> bug eyed, stiff legs, spotty lipped, worm headed, sack of monkey shit he is. Hallelujah. Holy shit. Where's the Tylenol? <laughs> you want the precursor to that. Yes. Yeah. So how does Clark say he wants Frank Shirley brought to him? Okay. Oh, man. I can't. Hopefully I can get the exact wording. It's tied up in a bow. I'll go to multiple choice because I don't think I can get the exact wording. All right. <laughs> Is it A, tied up with the dog chain, B, woken from his happy slumber, C, with the big ribbon on his head, or D, ready to kiss his ass. S. Ooh. These are a combination of a couple of them, but I'll go with a <laughs> with a ribbon. That is correct for two uh, for one point. Whew. All right, that one wore me out a little bit. All right, <laughs> question number four. I was so happy with Sarah's writing on that question. <laughs> you have to say something about woken from his slumber at some point. I know that. But yeah. yeah. He's like pulled out of his nice warm bed. Yeah. Holiday yeah. slumber. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah, we, <laughs> we kind of threw a few decoys in there. <laughs> right. Question number four. Finish the quote. Worse? How could things get any worse? Take a look around here, Ellen. We're at the blank. <laughs> My gut wants to say threshold of hell, but I'm going to go multiple choice. Is it A, threshold of hell? A, B. threshold of hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> That's funny. All right. Question number five. After lighting up his house with the 25,000 lights, what does Clark give his father credit for teaching him? Uh, everything he knows about exterior illumination. <laughs> that is correct for two points. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and your last question. Ooh, the crunch enhancer. Yeah, it's a blank. Uh, I didn't hear the question, so I'm going to have to use a bartender's. All right. We're going to go ahead and read the question one more time, then we'll go ahead and bring in our helpful bartender. Finish this quote. Ooh, the crunch enhancer. Yeah, it's a blank. And we're gonna go ahead and bring in our very handsome bartender. Talk about handsome. Thank you, cousin Ryan. It coats and seals the flake so milk can't penetrate. It's a non nutritive cereal varnish. Wait, what just happened? What do you, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. That, that I used a, I used a bartender. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's correct for two points. Yeah. Good job. Okay. Wow. Uh, Jordan got a one point steal out of that. Otherwise, Benny, you had a pretty good round. That was some tough, sparky hints right there. Uh, so Jordan, we're going to bring up your wheel of, of destiny here. But now that she's going, all you got to do is tell us when to stop, and we'll give you your category. Uh, stop. Uh, so Jordan, you hit one of our penalty slices, and this is called the straight up no chaser slice, which means that your first and last question in your categories, you cannot check to multiple choice. Mm, okay. So we're going to get the wheel going again, and then go ahead and let us know when to stop. And stop. <laughs> well, you've already picked that one, so we'll go <laughs> get you going again here. OK. And stop. Furry things. Okay. This is animal in Lampoon's movies. Mm. Okay. I will be asking you these questions in the category of furry animals in Lampoon movies. Question number one. At the end of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, what animal is staring down Clark as the credits start to roll? That would be the dog, Snots. That's correct for two points. Question number two. What was the name of Aunt Edna's dog who Clark forgets about and attaches to the back of his station wagon in National Lampoon's Vacation? I just watched this too. Uh, uh, I'll probably get it on a multiple choice. Let's go multiple. Is it A, Darby, B, Bruno, C, Buddy, or D, Dinky? It's D, uh, Dinky. Mm -hmm. It's correct for one point. Yeah. Question number three. What ends up frying Aunt Bethany's cat that she wrapped up for Clark? Ooh, that would be the a Christmas lights. Or... That's correct for a point. Yeah. Two. Two points, excuse me. Uh, question number four. What affectionate name for Clark does Ellen repeatedly call him that sounds suspiciously like an animal's name? That would be Sparky. That's correct. <laughs> Question number five. Who ends up with the squirrel jumping on their chest at the finish of the squirrel scene in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? That, that would be Julie Louis-Dreyfus, also known as Margot, the neighbor. <laughs> that is correct. And then lastly, when Clark scolds Snots for drinking the Christmas tree water, Eddie tells Clark not to worry because the day before, Snots drank how much of what? 
about a half a quart of pen's oil. <laughs> okay, yeah, I got it for two points. <laughs>
Are you being serious, Clark? That is correct for two points. <laughs> <laughs> Question number five. In the category of holiday music for five points. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation was the only vacation film to not feature the song Holiday Roads, which is famously written and sang by what musician? Uh, Lindsey Buckingham. That is correct for five points. Mm. Wow. Mm. And last question in the category of Aunt Bethany for three points. Who does Aunt Bethany ask if they are still in the Navy in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? Is Rusty still in the Navy? Yeah. <laughs> that is correct for three points. Line. Talk about a just clean sweep through that category. <laughs> oh, Holy wow. crap. That was, a, that was an impressive six-pack. I don't know if anyone has come in and aced the six-pack. Uh, wow. Okay, Jordan, you you need to have a great six pack. <laughs> well, uh, I thought that I had him on the the literature one, but uh, I guess not. <laughs> he pulled John Grissom out of his ass. Yeah. That's for sure. But, uh, <laughs> the score now stands: Benny forty eight, and Jordan, you with your twenty. But a lot can happen in the six packs. So we're going to start with your six pack. And your first question is in the category of nineteen eighty nine TV for three points. 1989 saw the debut of what competition show that featured Malibu, Lace, Zap, Nitro, and Sunny in their debut? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only got, got one guess, and it's got to be American Gladiators? That's correct for three points. <laughs> uh, category number... Two, or excuse me, uh, question number two in the category of Ruby Sue for four points. Name the ways that Ruby Sue's eyes were crossed and then uncrossed. Uh, she falls in a well, her eyes go cross. She gets kicked by a mule, they go uncrossed. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, correct for four points. Yeah. Nice. Well done. Uh, category or excuse me, question number three in the category of games for two points. What handheld game console was released in 1989? Handheld game console. Uh, well, it's got to be one of two. Uh, you still have your bartender's hand if you'd like to use that. Does that cost any points? No. If I get it wrong. Okay, sure. I'll use the hint. Okay. So the question is, what handheld game console was released in 1989? Let's go ahead and bring in, uh, through some witchcraft, our bartender. I'm not sure why Moose is having a hard time understanding what's happening. But your hint, my favorite way to play Tetris. Uh, it's got to be the Game Boy. Correct for two points. Question number five, or excuse me, question number four. I keep doing that. Question number four in the category of Uncle Lewis for five points. What Academy Award nominated actor plays the role of Uncle Lewis? Oh. <laughs> I was shocked. To read that this guy was nominated for an Academy Award. Yeah. <laughs> Afterwards, I would like to try to guess the film. Yeah. Okay. I could have saved my hint for this, but but do I get two or is it one? You still have two more. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's use a bartender's hint. Okay. So the question is: Is what Academy Award nominated actor plays the role of Uncle Lewis? And once again, the clone of Cousin Ryan. Cousin Ryan. <laughs> He was nominated for his role as Don Corrado Prizzi in 1985's Prizzi's Honor. I don't know. I don't even have a guess. So, I... Bill Hickey? Passed, yeah. It is William <laughs> Hickey, correct. Yeah. Uh, question number five 
in the category of vacation flicks for six points. Jordan, if you want to stand a chance in the game, it's probably a good idea to double down here. Here, okay. Uh, your next your next question is an only uh, is only a one point question. Oh, it is. Okay, then I'll double down. Sure. Then are you going to save the Haas hole? Yeah, I'm taking it home with me. I think. Okay. <laughs> In National Lampoon's Vegas Vacation, what actor and comedian played the role of Mr. Ellis, an unlucky man who never had a family and gives Clark his winning keynote ticket? Oh, fuck. You still have a bartender's hint. Should you want to bring in our multiplicity yeah. type round? I know, I know it's a famous comedian, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll use the bartender's hint. <laughs> In National Lampoon's Vegas Vacation, what actor and comedian plays the role of Mr. Ellis, an unlucky man who never had a family and gives Clark his winning Kino ticket? Because of science, here's Cousin Ryan. His name's kind of like you combine the bad guy from Toy Story and like in a really amazing kind of salad. We don't serve it here at the bar, though. <laughs> oh, Sid Caesar. That's correct. Oh, for 12 yeah. points. <laughs> 12 big points. Wow. <laughs> well done. Uh, unfortunately, even with that and without Benny using his <laughs> hostile, he saved the hostile. Jordan, unfortunately, you were eliminated. Yeah. And the loser sure. from today's match. Uh -huh. Benny, congratulations. But, Jordan, you've been such a fun guest, and we love you to death, buddy. We're going to give you your final question just for shits and giggles. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. And we figured you this is an appropriate way for you to end your match with an Eddie quote. Yeah. <laughs> what is Eddie's reason for dumping his waste into Clark's sewer? The shitter was full. <laughs> that, that is correct <laughs> for one point benny the victor mm. 48 to 42 mm. wow well freaking so done guys <laughs> well done I'm you guys broke. know this movie inside and out uh benny i think caught a, a luckier break with the john grissom pull for eight extra yeah. points <laughs> to win the game that was a great good job guys yeah, that, was uh -huh. a job. that was a lot of fun this Again, I, we were excited about this match because we love this movie so much, and I know that you guys do too. Yep. Uh, so we're going to start with the loser, with Jordan. Um, and Jordan, we're going to allow you, and sorry to call you a loser, but in the grand <laughs> scheme of trivia, you did not get as many points as Benny, so that does make you the loser of this match. Uh, we are going to allow you to plug, pitch, whatever you would like. Uh, and if there is a person or a category that you'd like to come back and play again. We'd love to have you back. Please nominate what you would like to. All right. Well, uh, you can find me uh, we're on the, the Movie Hero Network uh, on YouTube, where you may see some of these guys from, from time to time on there. Yeah. And um, we uh, I got a couple of matches coming up this this week. We're, we're doing uh, 128 for Mr. Steven Shepard, friend of the show. <coughs> so we're, we're starting his up. And then... Uh, I believe we we have a De Niro versus Al Pacino tournament coming up too, yeah. so so that should be a, a fun time. And then we're also getting into pretty fairly soon a three part series on best movies of 2015. So we've been working our way back from 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 2022 all the way, and we're down to 2015. So so yeah, and and I would also like to issue a, a, a challenge to anyone who wants to to. Uh, Play me on a uh, family movie match. So any family movies, so like mm. PG family movies, I grew up on those. I watch them all the time. So anyone who wants to uh, challenge me back, I'll, I'll accept any and all uh, challengers. Anyone who wants to verse me in a match. So, Well, I definitely know some people that we can get going. We might be able to get like a four-way family match. That'd yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Jordan, we would absolutely love to have you back on the show. And thank you so much for having us. Uh, we'll throw it to our winner, Benny, who is our one subscriber to the show. I'm sorry, 17th subscriber to the show. Uh, Benny, what, what would you like to say to the kind folks out there? 
Uh, one, I would like to thank Jordan for playing this match. He clearly knows more about Christmas vacation than I do. Uh, I just happened to get other questions in round three <laughs> and had those pay yeah, off. Like, break, yeah. yeah, all of my big points, you know, they came from the other stuff, not Christmas vacation. If it was 25 Christmas vacation questions, uh, he would have beaten me. So thank him for coming on and uh, playing so well. And thank all of you guys for watching. I truly appreciate you coming in every week and uh, listening to us ask questions and act like idiots. And I would like to encourage you all, please like, click, and subscribe, or just fuck off. Ah, thank you. I wanted that on this. <laughs> <laughs> the famous Benny quote. Well, on behalf of Cousin Ryan, on behalf of Benny, on behalf of our good friend Jordan, movie hero Anderson, I've been your host for this match, Moose Haas. I still can't explain why Cousin Ryan has duplicated himself. Again, it's either witchcraft or something out of multiplicity, but hey, it works. Mm -hmm. We love you guys. Like, click, or subscribe, or fuck off. And hey, Merry Christmas in March. Yes. Yay!